Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm Salim. And I'm Brenna. And we're here to talk about two new network shows, The Carrie Diaries on The CW and The Following on Fox. Let's start with The Carrie Diaries. The year, 1984. The first day of school was something I usually found exciting, but this time I was afraid to walk through those doors. I was the freak who had lost her mom. Are you holding up? I'd be a lot better if I didn't feel like everyone was staring at me. Oh, please, no one is even looking at you. Believe it or not, I think Mags actually meant that as a compliment. So the show The Carrie Diaries is a prequel to HBO Sex and the City, uh, also created by Candace Bushnell, who wrote the books, which became a series. This also, she wrote the books, and it looks at the lead character, Carrie Bradshaw, as a teenager in the 1980s. And it's really just a show about her teenage years growing up and how she kind of evolves into the fashionista writer that she became later on in life. I thought the, the writing was really sharp in this, and I really liked the characters. I was just kind of surprised how interesting it was and how it kind of veered from the typical teen fair that we see. Not a big fan of Sex in the City, but I was shocked. The dialogue was great. It was snappy. It was witty. It had this great emotional feel to the show. It was, the dialogue was playful, but it was also thoughtful at times. I, I was really surprised because someone like me, Guy, this might not be a show that I would go and watch, but I enjoyed it. I was also really surprised by the strong writing, um, and it actually feels like how teenagers would talk, which is usually hard for adults to capture. But they did a really good job with this. Do you ever just sit there, and, and the words and thoughts are like happening so fast in your mind that you just, you can't even understand them? Not really. <laughs> oh. I wish I hadn't just said that then. I, I knew going into it that the writing would probably be really good because we have Candace Bushnell mm -hmm. and Amy Harris who are behind it. If you watch Sex and the City, you can kind of see the evolution of Carrie's character. For example, at the end when she, you know, writes in her journal in front of a window, that was kind of how every Sex and the City episode ended with her on her computer writing in front of a window. And the use of the voiceover is also uh, taken from directly from Sex and the City. And I think that'll be neat for Sex and the City fans to watch just to see how she evolved as a mm -hmm. character. Anna Sophia Robb mm -hmm. plays the lead, plays Carrie Bradshaw, and she does a fabulous job. She's, I mean, she's, she's always good. You know, we right. saw her in Charlie and Chocolate Factory and Soul Surfer, so she's, we know that she's, she's a capable actress. My only complaint isn't anything with her performance, it's her appearance, mm -hmm. and she looks really, really young. Mm -hmm. She looks about 12, and it's a little disconcerting when you see her, like, having sloppy makeouts in a pool with this <laughs> Abercrombie and Fitch type model guy. Um, but that's really not for any of her fault. Her performance itself is very strong. Yeah, I think you can definitely identify with her too. And it, for, you know, for me who grew up in the 80s, it kind of brings me back to a time where I was trying to figure out myself and so I could identify with that. And I think a lot of teenagers will also identify with, you know, what am I going to do now? Where am I going to go? I'm in the city and I belong. Manhattan is mine. But then I always wake up the same old Carrie Bradshaw in Castlebury, Connecticut. Carrie has three best friends, which actually mirror characters from Sex and the City. So you have Mouse, who's the kind of naive, innocent girl in some ways, um, who kind of resembles Charlotte from Sex and the City. Then you have Walt, who is very protective, kind of big brother type. He's more like Miranda. And then there's his girlfriend, Maggie, who's kind of a little bit looser <laughs> and a little bit more blunt in the way she speaks. Mm -hmm. So she is more of the Samantha character. What's interesting is that in Sex and the City, they always, you know, met at a restaurant or a bar and they sat around in a circle and they talked about their lives. Here they just do it in the library, which mm -hmm. I thought was kind of cute. Hey, where's Walt? I told him I wanted it to be just us girls. Were you two fighting again? Oh, come on, you guys are never going to break up here forever. That's right. And the mouse and I will be a couple forever, too. Production value-wise, it's it's the 80s. It really set, sends you back to this time period with the hair, the colors, everything, the clothes. And it's, it's phenomenal. They even have uh, set pieces that are great. They go to this department store. They go to this club called Indochine. It really feels like what 80s New York might have been like. Fans of Sex and the City will love this show. See it. Having been a teenager in the 80s, I actually found watching Carrie's shenanigans play out really entertaining. So I say see it. The Carrie Diaries has all the elements of a fun teen show, and the demographic will love it. See it. Now it's time to talk about the new Fox show, The Following. Joe Carroll, he didn't just kill 14 female students. He was making art. He was obsessed with his hero, Edgar Allan Poe. It's been a new development. Three bodies were found murdered in the last six hours. He's finding people to help him. It's like there is followers.
The following is about Joe Carroll, this super charismatic romantic literature professor and serial killer, <laughs> and the FBI agent Ryan Hardy, who brings him to justice 10 years ago. In present day, Joe Carroll has escaped from prison, and they have to bring back Ryan Hardy from retirement mm -hmm. to help track him down. They finally get him back in prison, but they find out that he has some followers who are acting on their own and sort of mimicking copycat crimes. And uh, Ryan Hardy has to stick around to try and put him all to justice. The show is created by Kevin Williamson, who we all know from Scream. I know what you did last summer, a slew of other awesome horror movies. And, and this is no different. We have a great horror premise, a great show, amazing writing. It's wonderful because it's not your run-of-the-mill cop show. It's not a procedural that they have to figure out the case every week. It's about Kevin Bacon's character, Ryan Hardy, and James Purefoy's character of Joe Carroll and their relationship um, and them playing off of each other. Yeah, the plot, I think, was razor sharp. The writing is razor sharp. And what's interesting is we've seen four episodes of it, so we know that it's mm -hmm. going, you know, where it's going. And it it's going it's in doing. some really, yes, compelling places. It's not kind of what you expect. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, you know, to this to the show's credit. And we have Kevin Bacon playing Ryan Hardy, <laughs> and he is fantastic. <laughs> Something I think I should say about most of the main characters in this show is half the story is told through flashback. Mm -hmm. So these actors have to play pretty much two or three versions of the same character. The character before trauma, during the trauma, and then after the trauma. So it's it's really compelling to watch these different actors interpret different stages in these characters' lives. Yeah, yeah, I, I love Kevin Bacon. It feels like he only chooses projects that he's really passionate about, that he really feels like there's something, there's some meat on the bone there. And and, and you can see it in the show, he, he plays a really intriguing character that has so much going on underneath his hard exterior. but. There also is a little bit of a soft side to him. They stray a little into stereotype area because he's the bad cop with a record who, you know, is loose cannon, drinks, cannon, his drinks too much. <laughs> but it's really quite forgivable because Kevin Bacon does something unique with it. I'm not an agent anymore. I know things didn't end well with the Bureau, but you caught Carol. No one knows him like you do. I've got good agents on him. Go consult, educate him. We have to find him fast. Let's talk about James Purefoy a little bit, who plays the villain. He's pure evil. He's amazing. Yeah, I love it. He's got all the best villain traits. He's a puppet master to all these followers who are completely obsessed with him. And he's sort of formed what we might call a cult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a cult based almost entirely on the works of Edgar Allan Poe. He cut out his victim's eyes as a nod to his favorite works of Poe, The Telltale Heart and The Black Cat. See, Poe believes the eyes are our identity, windows, to our soul. This show has amazing production design. It's got some of the best sets I've seen in a long time. They have this this house where the followers went to when they were first becoming sort of this, this cult. And there's writing on the walls, and there's murals, and there's drawings, and blood, and quotes from Edgar Allan Poe mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. You'd feel that like writing nevermore on mm -hmm. blood on the wall would be cheesy, but it's really not. It no, because really it becomes well. a plot point, too. Mm -hmm. And the, even the writing on her skin, mm -hmm. that was really creepy and interesting. I think this is actually the best use of flashbacks since Lost, because every flashback gives you the exact amount of information that you need to propel you to the next scene. The director of the first episode and a few of the other ones as well is Marco Siega, who also did Vampire Diaries and an independent film called Pretty Persuasion. And I think he gets the tone just right. He has that dark, gritty feel, but it's not too much. Um, he knows how to pace things really well. He knows how to do scares really well. And I'm really hoping that he continues on. It's dark and it's twisted and it's beautiful and absolutely captivating. See it. The following is a wholly original and compelling thriller that doesn't sacrifice character for thrills. I think it's the best show of the new season. I say see it. The following offers so much more than your run-of-the-mill cop show. It's a definite see it. Cheers. Cheers to death and horror. <laughs> and the Carrie Diaries. Oh, it's the same thing. We're here to talk about two new network shows, The Carrie Diaries on CW, and the other one. Ha, 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 ha.